Today is a quick video to talk about this, the Cube Pilot ecosystem, and specifically the three posters that they've released showing you the hardware that is available from them, as well as the hardware that works with the Cube Autopilot. Now, since these posters have released, I get quite a few questions asking what the equipment is, why is it there, and how to wire all of this up. So what I thought I would do is put a quick video together, walking through each of the posters one at a time, talking about the different bits of hardware, but specifically why they are wired in the way they are and some things that you need to be aware of if you are putting your own aircraft together. Now, just before I jump into it, I do want to say if you are interested in supporting the channel, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Also, if you'd like to support us further, there are links to Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's get on to the QPilot website and take a look at the first poster. Okay, so I've moved over to the QPilot website and I've got the poster up. Now, I'm lucky to actually own this poster in person, but if you don't have a copy, I'll put a link to it in the description. You can download it, print it yourself, or just have a copy on your computer if you wish. Now, what we're going to do is dive in and take a closer look at each part of this system. Something to understand, though, is what they're showing here is a selection of hardware. It is not, though, the exclusive only hardware you can use. QPilot and Ardra Pilot is a fantastic system that has massive compatibility with lots of different hardware out there. What you've got on here is just a very small selection of that. Now, one other thing I do just want to quickly add is if you are interested in getting anything off this poster, check out 3DXR in the UK. They are a dealer that support the Cube Pilot system. They sell the Cube Auto Pilots as well as close to anything you might need for your drone, plane, or autonomous system. Whilst they are UK-based, they also ship globally as well. And if you're interested in getting anything, including the Cube Autopilots, GPSs, motors, please do check them out. And I will put a link to them in the description of this video. Okay, so to jump into the poster, now the first thing we're going to do is zoom straight into the middle and go to the heart of the system. And this is the Cube Autopilot. Now, the Cube has been around for many years now. It started with the Cube Black, or what was originally known as the Pixel 2.1, and it's evolved since then to the latest version, which is the Cube Orange, that features a H7 400 megahertz CPU and plenty of horsepower to allow Ardra Pilot to introduce new features and new capabilities. Now, the brilliant thing about the Cube ecosystem is that it is fully backwards compatible. So, for instance, the Cube module itself and the carrier board are separate, but any current cube can be used on any carrier board. So if you bought yourself a Pixhawk 2.1 a few years ago and you want to upgrade, you can simply buy the Cube Orange module and place it on your carrier board and it will work. And this is the big benefit of the Cube Pilot or ecosystem is the fact that it does have this backwards compatibility. Now, the Cube Orange, as I've said, is the latest version, and they are showing it here with the standard carrier board, which is the one they ship, that now features the ADS-B in feature built in from UAVionics. And this allows you to receive ADS-B signals from manned aircraft to allow you to detect where they are. Now, just to be clear, this is ADS-B in only. It is not ADS-B out, which means you don't require any certification. It is simply giving you the ability to actually detect manned aircraft, and you're getting that for the same price as the standard cube, so it's basically a free part of the system. Now, there is also a separate poster talking about carrier boards, and I will talk about that a little bit towards the end of the video. The one, as I've said here, is the standard cube one, but the brilliant thing about this system is that you can design your own carrier board, or you can use one from the many companies that do make compatible models as well. Now, we have addressed the carrier board. The next thing to talk about is the power system because you will notice there's quite a lot of that dotted around the poster. Now, when you get your cube, they do give you a power module in the pack. However, that is basically a get you up and running power module to get everything tested. Really, you should get yourself a 
proper power system. And the best of those on the market is these from Mac. And these are high quality power systems that allow you to customize your power system for close to any use case scenario. Now, I've been using their power modules for a number of years, and frankly, they are the best on the market. You get current sensors, back modules, hubs that allow you to build your system depending on what your use case is. Now, here what they are showing is a battery from Tattoo, which is going into the current sensor, which is then going out of the current sensor down into power your ESCs. You've then got the basic back module, which goes into the current sensor and is supplying the power for the Cube Autopilot. And that setup is a basic setup for most uses. Now, you will notice on this board, dotted all over the place, a number of other backs. We've got another 5.3 here, another tw a 12 volt one here, a 12 volt one here, another 5.3 one here, and another 5.31 here. Now, the reason they're showing all of these different back modules is they're showing that you may need to add more modules depending on what devices you've got attached. Whilst the Cube will power devices connected via the GPS and CAN bus ports, it is worth noting that if you are using a large number of devices, you may need to add additional power modules to be able to supply the required current. For for instance, if we look at the top, we've got a number of GPS modules and servos, and they're all connected to this board, which we'll talk about here. And they're using an additional back to actually help power that to make sure it's got the current it needs. With regards to these over here, you can see we've got some 12 volt modules, one for the Heuerlink VTX and one for the FLIR camera. Again, not relying on the power from the autopilot and making sure that your devices are getting the power that they need. Now, depending on what you do need, you can go onto Mark's website and they have a huge list of different options available and they do show you some of the ones that might be best for your use case. So that is the best ones to look at, in my opinion. Now, moving to the top of the poster, there's quite a lot going on up here that requires explaining. We've got our GPS modules. So we have our Hue 3, which is the latest one from Cube Pilot. And we also have the Hue Pro, which is their upcoming high-end professional module that offers triple band, multi-constellation, PPK GPS, CAN, and it also has a built-in H7 CPU as well. Now, you'll note that all of these devices here are CAN based. We have the GPS on the Hue 3. We have the Hue Optical Flow, some CAN based high tech servos and the Hue Pro. And you'll notice that these are all going here into either this CAN board or this CAN port here. Now, CAN on the Cube has two ports, but it is daisy chainable and that is why we have this little board here what they've done is daisy chained the here three the optical flow and the two servos into this little board and then that board is going in to can port two you'll also notice that they've got another step down module here going into the cam bud board as well and that is just to help power these devices because as i've already said whilst they are powered off the board they may need a little help you can also see that it's wired to the Hue Pro, and the reason for that is the Hue Pro actually has a separate power source from GPS simply because of how powerful it is. And what they've done is teed that into the Hue Pro and into the main board. And then the CAN is simply the data line going into its own CAN port. You could technically put it into this little board as well. However, what they're just showing, your best with the Hue Pro going into CAN 1 and then multiple other devices into CAN 2. Now, you might be wondering, well, what is this board and where can I get it? Now, this simply is the same board that you used to get for I2C. It is nothing really specific. The only real change is that it does have a power input little bit here that allows you to add an additional back, but you can still use that original I2C splitter that you used to get with the original cubes on this for CAN bus as well. There's nothing else specific than that.
Now, as I've said, we've got the Hue 3, which is the latest GPS, and I have done a separate review on that. The Hue 3 being cam based has no uh, arming switch. I'm not going to use the word safety switch because that's a bit of a bone of contention. However, it does not have an arming switch. And if you do want to use one, you'll have to use one separately. We've then got the Hue Flow optical flow module, and you've got two CAN bus based servos from high tech. Now, I have actually done a review on these and used these already, and this is really where the future of servos is going to be going. They are a digital servo that offers connection and communication over CAN bus. They're able to feed back real-time position. And as you can see, they're not only connected to the CAN bus for data, but they're powered from it as well. And rather than using traditional PWM ports, you're using them on CAN. It is still early days. You're not seeing wide, wide adoption yet. However, they are out there and you're going to see more and more of them as time goes on. We've then over the side here got our Hue Pro, which is that high-end built-in GPS with the H7 G CPU memory. And it's basically almost a flight controller in itself. And then on the side, we've got our telemetry radio, which is our RF900, which is for communicating via your ground station. So whether you're using a laptop or something else, you've got your RF designs, RF RFD900, I should say. And these, again, are high-power, long-range telemetry radios that are connected into the telemetry one port rather than CAN bus. You've also on here got a light wave LiDAR, which again is for object sensing or sensing, depending on what you want to do, whether it's being measurement. And again, that's going into a spear UART port, which is going into GPS2. You might be wondering, why is it GPS2? Well, remember, GPS ports are UARTs. And if you're not using your GPS2 port because you're using CAN bus, for instance, you can use it as a traditional serial port just like Telem1 and Telem2. Now, moving over to this side, I'm going to move over to the radio a second and talk about the radio system because that goes hand in hand with the radio and something I get a lot of questions on. So on this diagram, they are showing the cube being used with HueLink. Now, the HueLink device itself is hiding down the bottom here, which is the remote. Those of you who watch the channel will know I've made a huge amount of content on this device. It's improving. It's getting better and better all of the time. And if we look at the eco poster, you can see that you've got the HueLink itself with the two antennas. We've then got an additional step down module being powered off our main power rail, taking it down to 12 volts. You've got your telem port for our Mavlink telemetry and then our S bus for our RC in. Now, HueLink is an integrated ground station and remote system. So it allows you to use Solex TX or Q ground control to control your aircraft, get your live video as well as feedback your RC link. Now, a few times I've been asked the question, why would you want HueLink and your RFD radios on the same aircraft? And that really is dependent on what you intend to do. So, for instance, HueLink is going to give you your RC control. It's going to give you your telemetry as well as your option to feed that telemetry via Wi-Fi or cable to a laptop. So why then? Would you want to use a long range radio system? Well, the reality is it comes down to redundancy and what else you want to be able to do. Whilst HealLink is capable of up to 20 kilometers, RF devices from uh, RF designs can go well beyond that. And they do offer you an additional level of protection. And that is, should you lose connection on HueLink for some reason, you can still control the aircraft via RFD. Whilst this poster shows both devices, you don't have to do it. It is simply showing you a use case that might be best for redundancy purposes, but also depending on what you're trying to do. For me, I think what is a really good use case would be using the HueLink for your ground station. And then if you are going to use a laptop as well, use the RFD radios because that way you've got a double system that offers redundancy on different frequencies. So that really just answers that one because it is something I've been asked a few times.
Moving down the poster, just to dive in on a couple of things, we've got our buzzer and USB port. Now, this cable does come with the Cube Pilot and it gives you an external USB rather than using the USB on the side of the Cube. It just makes life a little bit easier. And then you've got your Tones buzzer because there isn't one built in as standard. You can also get one of these with a safety switch built in as well. Moving over to here, they are showing an IR lock sensor, which again is really a visual positioning sensor, allows you to do things like lock onto a beacon for landing and do other things like that. Again, this sensor they're showing here is on the I2C bus rather than CAN or UART, but they are again showing that, that you can use multiple different kinds of devices. So again, we've got CAN based, serial and i2c devices all on the same autopilot all at the same time you'll also note our gps one port is empty and that is because we're not using that serial gps and if you were using canvas again you can get your safety switch option going into the two Moving down the poster, we're going down to the motors, ESC and power delivery area. Here we have some T-motor motors, which are the U8s. They're just showing you the kind of motors that are compatible. And they're showing you ESCs from APD, which is Advanced Power Devices. Now, they make some fantastic ESCs, not something I've actually tried myself. However, I hear very, very good things about these all of the time, especially if you're into fixed wing or larger aircraft as well. Now, the setup they're showing, as I said earlier, is we've got our battery power coming into our current sensor, which is a 100 amp current sensor, and then our positive line coming down into our power distribution board. And then that is being distributed out to our ESCs. But you've then also got the distribution here going up out to these 12 volt modules for supplying both the camera and the Hue link, as well as the Hue Pro. So if we follow that line up, it's going all the way up to the Hue Pro going down to 5 volt for the CAN bus and going down to 5 volt for the LiDAR. So it's just showing you the difference or the laser range finder, I should say. Um, it's just showing you the distribution of the power. We've then got our PWMs going up for our ESCs into the main output. Again, because there aren't that many CAN-based ESCs out there at the moment, they are still showing PWM here, but you can get CAN-based ESCs, and it is something we're going to see more and more of. And over time, you're likely to see new boards like this come with CAN bus options as well, allowing you to actually expand that way rather via traditional PWM. Finally, on the poster, we've then got our camera. And on this, they're showing a thermal th flare solution. Again, powered separately via the 12 volt step down from the power distribution board. And then HDMI into the Hue link for sending that live video back. And they've got that hooked up to a Gremsey gimbal. Now, that is the main overall ecosystem and they're showing you just one use case that you have for it if you're setting your one up you don't have to follow this but some things in this are telling you some really good use case scenarios and some really good best practices. So for instance, with multiple CAN devices, you need to be looking at adding additional power, making sure when you're powering things like cameras and Hue Link that you're using the correct BECS, which is 12 volt, and just showing you the overall layout of a Qpilot based aircraft with lots of different sensors and functionality. Now, just to show you something that they've recently added is their new poster based on the EDU450 frame that's made by Hexoon. Now, I actually reviewed that frame a couple of weeks ago, and it's a really nice frame for development use, as well as actually building a small aircraft. Now, again, they're showing you the Cube Pilot ecosystem here in all its glory with the Cube Orange in the center. We've got our Hue 3 GPS at the top. We've got our Hue Link for our wireless video and telemetry, RF 900 radios, laser LiDAR. We've got a 
dedicated Hexum power distribution board, which is a 40 amp PDB, which has six ESC outputs, a five and a 12 volt output. We've then got our T motor motors, some LEDs with the hue link in the middle. And this just shows the kind of use case scenario that you can get from this ecosystem. And again, showing you a really nice build using it. And I'm basically in the process of building an aircraft just like this and it is something that i will be showing you on the channel in the next couple of weeks and months but again if you're interested i will put a link to this poster in the description of this video as well it's really building this system into a very very nice platform that allows you to build yourself whether it be a development aircraft or something that you need for your data acquisition needs now one other thing I just want to add is around the other poster that I mentioned is regarding the custom carrier boards because QPilot do allow other manufacturers to make carrier boards for free. They will let you use their system design as long as you basically add it to their list of vendors. Now, these boards allow for multiple different setups and use cases. So the poster, again, shows the cube orange in the middle, and it shows you all the different cubes that are available along the bottom, and I will talk about them before we finish the video. But if we dive in, you can see you've got the standard carrier board here, which is the one I showed you on the other poster. We've got the carrier board mini over here, which offers very similar functionality in just a smaller platform. It doesn't have the built-in ADSB, but other than that, it is very, very similar. We've got the eBot carrier board, which again, I use in my Rover, and I have reviewed that on my channel. You've got the larger carrier board over here, which offers lots of different inputs and outputs. It's a much bigger one designed for quad use with the motor outputs on each corner. And then we've got the other custom carrier boards that have been made for custom use cases. So for instance, we've got this one here, which is the avionics version 1.3, which has lots of different gear on board. You can see we've got the RF 900 radios. We've got some pretty high end inputs and outputs as well as I'm guessing that's an onboard computer there. We've got this one at the top here, this one, and then these other ones down here, again, all by the companies listed along the bottom down here. This one was something I thought was really interesting when you looked at it. Cube Pilot compatible, so the cube mounts there. Lots of different power boards, large inputs and output relays, and a nice place to mount the here link. And again, this one here, a really another nice one showing you the here Pro mounted directly there. Here link cube pilot going in the middle you can see we've got a radio um antenna spot there so that might be for gps but that might be for radios we've got our xd connectors and our other input connections down here too moving down to the bottom of the poster you will find all of the current cube modules that are available now i have made a dedicated video on all of these explaining the differences however i will give you a quick overview now before we do that though it is worth stressing one thing and that is that all of these modules are pin for pin compatible with each other and they can all be used on any of these carrier boards and this is one of the great things about this ecosystem and that is that you can use whatever cube best suits your needs with whatever carrier board suits your needs and this makes it completely unique in the industry now, just to explain the differences between all of these, to do this, we need to start in the middle with the cube black because that was the original cube. It was originally known as the Pixhawk 2.1, and that is really where everything started. It was the STM F4 based CPU, and this, for a very long time, was the main cube everyone used. Due to upgrades and component changes, this cube is basically now no longer available and has been replaced with the cube orange. The orange is now the standard cube everyone who's looking to buy one should buy 
if they're looking for the one that does close to everything. It has the STM32H7 CPU, it has more RAM, and it's just a much faster and more powerful cube overall with the latest sensors. Now, just to explain these on the left, and then we'll come to the other two here as well. The green cube was a custom version of the original black, specifically designed for use in the 3DR Solo. It had improved ESC voltages, basically to solve some of the problems the original Solo had, and it really was specifically for that use case. Whilst that's not available now, you can also use the cube orange in that use instead of the cube green. The cube blue was a USA manufactured version of the cube black for markets that had to have a USA made autopilot. Originally, the cube blue spec was identical to the black. It was just manufactured in the US. The cube purple was a single board version of the cube black and the overall spec was the same apart from it did not have the two additional IMUs that were vibration isolated. It had no onboard isolation and it was basically designed for rover or ground water based applications. Now these three cubes were originally all developed based off the cube black. Today though things have changed slightly. The green is basically no longer available, but you can still get the purple and blue, but rather than them being based off the cube black, they are now based off the cube orange. So the latest cube blue is an American USA manufactured cube orange, and the cube purple is basically the same, just with the STM single IMUs rather than the multiple IMUs. Still though with the STM32H7 and that one is offering that option for users. Now talking about the final two cubes which is the cube yellow and the special cube gold. The cube yellow is an F7 based version of the latest model. So rather than use the H7 CPU, it was an F7 and it was designed really for use case in PX4 and some applications that weren't quite ready for the H7 CPU. It isn't widely available or distributed. It's really a special use case scenario. And again, if you're looking to get yourself a cube, you should be looking at the orange. Finally, the last cube to talk about is this very special one here on the side, and that is the cube gold. The gold is a special edition of the orange, simply in a gold casing. I am extremely privileged to actually own one of these, and I am massively grateful to the guys at Cube Pilot for very kindly sending me one over. It isn't one you can buy, but it is one that you may find in your package should you buy yourself a Cube Orange, because they have been giving them away as a special edition, and there are plenty of them hidden out there for users to find. Now, as I've already mentioned, I do have a whole video talking about the differences. The only one that won't be on that video is the Cube Gold. However, if you are interested in checking that out, I will put a link to it in the description of this video as well. Now, that is pretty much it for this one. I think we've covered everything, and the idea was really just to give you an overview of all the different elements of the system. We have the Cube Pilot poster, which shows us some really good best practices for setting the system up. So for instance, with the CAN board, with the additional BECs. Something I didn't mention on this one was the power two option as well. So whilst we were looking at all the other BECs, they're also showing an additional BEC going into power two, because remember the Cube Pilot ecosystem offers redundancy pretty much across all levels. You've then got this new poster showing the EDU 450 frame and I've got one of them here. I really do like this frame and I'm looking forward to getting my build on this up and running as well. But again, it's just showing you 
the kind of use case. And then we've got these custom carrier boards from various manufacturers. Whilst all of these may not be available to purchase, it is showing you the kind of use case that is out there. And if you want to design your own, you can reach out to Cubepilot and they will talk to you about that and guide you in the right direction to be able to continue to expand the system more and more. Now, as I mentioned at the start, if you do want to get any of this stuff, you can get it over at 3DXR in the UK. So, for instance, you can get the Hexoon frame, the EDU 450, or anything such as the Cube Autopilot, the GPSs. And they're a fantastic dealer that have been very kind to the channel over the years. So, if you are interested in getting some stuff, please do check them out. Overall, I have to say, I will put some links in the description to the other stuff for the Pilot system as well. And really, if you found this video interesting, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. That way you will get updates when I do release any more videos. Please do let me know what you think as well. If you have any questions, any comments, please do put them in the comment section of this video. And I will try to answer them as soon as possible too. Finally, I'd just like to say if you're interested in joining my Discord server, there is a link to that in the comment section as well. It's free. If you want to come over and say hello or have any questions, please do check that one out as well.